Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down 43. Nasdaq is up 8. S&P's down 2.5. Let's go to Mark in Colorado. Hey, Mark, what's going on, brother? Not too much. How you doing? Hey, I'm Mark. doing great, man. I'm doing great. Good. Good, good. Hey, um, I wanted to see if you guys could look at the coffee contract for me. I've been following the, the ETF. It's called the Joe, J-O. Yes. It looks like it's doing an ABC down, but I really can't. There's not a ton of data on it, and um, it doesn't go that far back. So it looks like that's doing an ABC down to about 30 bucks. But it's kind of intriguing, and I've been watching it from a fundamental standpoint because it's I've been reading a lot of articles on how climate change is kind of impacting the growers and their ability to, to grow a lot of the coffee that people drink. Yeah, I read some articles about that recently myself. That's pretty cool. Hey. So let's take a look at it. So I, I see that this is a monster A to B equals C to D. Holy cow. So your eight point is one thirty dollar thirty one. The, first, I'm going to do the coffee contract, folks. So we're on the, the May contract. So 131.70, we'll ballpark this. Okay, so it's, it's a 30 cent A to B. Which gets you 79 cents, right? Eight, nine, nine, nine. Yeah, 79 cents. You know, you, you, you broke. Now, let me see if the Joe, J-O. So now if we bring up the ETF, this is the IPATH Coffee Sub-Index Total Return ETN. Yeah, same setup, okay. Yeah, so your A point on this is 47. The B's 36, so what, 11 bucks? Gets you, gets you 28, right? Yeah, 28, 30. Let me bring this back now. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, so 28, we'll remember that, and what, I'm going to go back to, what I'm going to do, folks, go back to the futures, but I'm going to bring up the KC1, the continuous contract, so we can really bring this back. KC1. Okay, so that's it. this on weekly. Oh man, if that's the case, this is going to be pretty intense. Look at this. Okay, so, well, I guess what I'd do... Man, I don't want to short it, but I'm looking at maybe when, when it might be a good time to buy it. Yeah, no, I, yeah, this is what I would do. What's so cool about commodities is that and you, you, you'd be able to find this out pretty easy, I think. I'd find out, like, what the production cost of this coffee is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what does yeah. it cost to produce it? Because what happens is that it can go underneath that and stay under that two or three months, but the reality is, is that if, if it does that, well, you know, that's when you normally get a pop. Now, we go back to 2001, it was at 41 cents a pound. So 94 is still pretty big. You know, I can see, I can see 64 or something. What, what, do we, what number do we have? We had 80. He had 80. Oh, well, 80 can get there. 80 can get there easy, Mark. We're at 94. Right. That's not a big deal. Uh, in fact, yes, yeah, so we were at 87 in 2005. It took off at 67 and then went up to 306. Man, Starbucks and these guys should be making a fortune, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. SBUX. I got to see this for a second because I wonder why so many people are in the coffee business. I mean, it's like. Well, it's the drug business. Yeah. It's good business Well, to look be at in. that. All-time <laughs> highs. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. If your main product is going down, we know that Starbucks... The ingredients cost a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not even close, right? It's, yeah. It, and, no, and no one's even expecting it to go down either. It's not like, right. you know, it's not like <clears throat> gas prices. No one keeps track of coffee prices. Right. Wholesale coffee right. prices yeah. anyway. Do you know what I mean? Hey, so do you get your skis on? Oh, yeah, I've been on. We, we got a couple feet last, last weekend. So. Holy cow, a couple feet. Not, not, not in, not in the, the front range area. We got like four to eight inches in the, in the area, like the front range with Denver, Fort Collins. White okay. gold, There's, right? White right gold. in the mountains, yep. You know, I met, I met a guy last night uh, that only moved to Denver six years ago, and he's telling me, that, you know, I haven't been in Denver in a long time now, and he is saying to me, you guys have so many cranes downtown, it's insane, right? Oh, yeah, they're right? building like crazy, yeah. That's pretty wild, man. That's, you know. Yeah. Denver's always been a growth place, folks, but, uh, you know, years ago, if I go back to, you know, 2000, it was a growth place because of the mining structures more than just real business. And that sounds like uh, those high-rises are real business now, right? 
Yeah, there's a lot, lot going on. There's a lot of energy companies, but there's also a lot of, a lot of other, other companies coming in as well. Yeah. Companies and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the whole Union Station area, which used to be kind of warehouse district, is now, um, really exploded. And what was area. the place where that whole thing, uh, where, where Coors Field is and all that? What is that called? What's that? That's uh, that's called Lower Downtown or Lodo. Okay. And Union Union Station is right near there. Right. So. Because that's yeah. where it actually started, right? A lot of that growth, right? Right, that helped, and then yeah. they renovated the old train station, um, and then everything's exploded around that. Wild, man. Yeah. Well, gotta love it. Yeah, well, thanks for your time, guys. Okay, Appreciate man. It. Thanks, Have Mark. a great one. Have a safe one. Bye.